Getting ready for the Edgerton tour. The first one since Pepper passed. May 26, 2018. <laughs> one more time, Dale. <laughs> okay, we want to thank everyone for coming to the uh, first tour we've had actually since Pepper passed away. Uh, the walking part is going to start right here. It's about a mile and a quarter in. We have two guys that are very experienced. They'll get you in there safely. I'm going to drive in with those who can't walk, and we'll meet you up there at the uh, former Hunter Pavilion, which is now torn down, and we'll start the tour right there. Enjoy the walk. Be safe. Uh, and there are you guys right there. And we're now on the road to Edgerton. The guys from the club opened the gate for us. And we're going in, and we have one truck following us. That's the old road right there to the right, going down to Mayfield. A few puddles in the road here. The road is in fairly good shape going into Edgerton. And there's the truck that's following us in. Still haven't reached the pavilion yet, or what's left of the Hunter's Pavilion. This was where one of the railroads that took coal out of Edgerton came down years ago. There's no remnants of it left now at all. No wood or metal, but it was right there. Okay, we're inside of the uh, former Hunter Pavilion. And again, just like a few months ago, this bridge is in very good shape compared to what it was like last year. It was really washed out and uh, one foot to the wrong side either way, left or right last year, we would have rolled the Jeep. But it's in pretty good shape now. But all of the stands, the ta picnic tables and everything from the Hunter's Pavilion is gone. Just the two flagpoles are left. Yeah, the Hunter's Pavilion is totally gone now. They uh, tore everything down. This is the road where the hikers are going to come out once they make their way from Aylesworth Park. They're probably at least halfway through. We're probably close to it right now. But no sign of them yet. And they're starting to straggle into the old hunter's camp. They made it. And it looks like everybody made it in safely. Okay, I'm glad we all made it in safely. Uh, we're at the very bottom edge, the very western edge of Edgerton. Right in here was uh, Sophronius Schuss Hotel, back there somewhere in those trees. I'm not sure exactly where the foundation's gone, but that was torn down probably in the 1920s. And the original road going back to German was just the other side of that little shed there, that concrete block shed there. That's the original road, took you into German, right through Aylesworth Park and the dam. And that road is closed off now because of the dam. Over on the other side there where those trees are, used to be where uh, they had chickens and cows and the animals and they had a nice house for all the people down there. Somewhere in this area was a jail cell. We're not sure exactly where. Along this road here, along these uh, pines, there was four or five buildings. There was a bottling company, a couple other buildings. There was a large fire around 1901 or two. And one building was not insured. The fire jumped over that, burned all the rest of them down. That one survived. It was somewhere along that line of uh, trees. The folks from the Archibald Historic Society for inviting me up. Uh, as I turn my shirt, you can get this on film. You can see it's the 250th anniversary of our region and people uh, this year in 2018. Um, thank you for being very patient till I wandered back in here and found the parking lot. I appreciate that from everyone. Uh, one note about this. Anthracite is not unique to northeastern Pennsylvania. That's not what we celebrate here. That's actually mythology. Anthracite is available currently in over two dozen countries around the world right now. You can mm -hmm. check that out on the internet and see it. Uh, what happened here, though, is more important. We are apparently the only place in the world where people took their cultural name, history, mythology, and region from the coal industry. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's the only place it goes on. 
but anthracite culture is unique to northeastern Pennsylvania, and we're the only example of a region to do this. So uh, coal is personal to us. It may be historic to other people. It may be a family economic tradition, but it's our cultural heritage. It's our identity, and that's why every one of us who is here today is extended family. So on behalf of that, uh, happy 250th to us all. Thanks for coming. The crowd is walking up now towards the remains of the foundation of Peter Stella's saloon. Nice crowd today, a very good day for the tour. Okay, this pile of rocks here you see in front of you that's spread all over the place is the remains of Peter Stella's saloon. The reason they're piled that way is because in the 1990s there was people up here with bulldozers pushing everything around trying to get silt. And uh, that is though a foundation of a building and it was a saloon. And it was up for sale in the early 1900s, 1902 or three, and then the town shut down 05. That's all that's left. We do want to do some metal detecting later there probably uh, this month and this, this saloon and some of the other ones. And the group is starting to make their way up towards the uh, pay shack. It looks like a quad is coming up alongside them. Right now we're at the site of the pay shack, somewhere in this area. There's no foundation, but Pepper had told me over the years it was in this area here. And uh, they didn't want mine script like some of the other companies paid in, so they paid them in silver dollars. This is also on our list for metal detecting. But they did have a lot of water come through here over the years, so there might be uh, nothing here. It could have been washed out but it was somewhere out in this area here where the pay shack was. Right in this area here, somewhere in this area, was the mule barn. And once we uh, go up by the breaker and turn around and come back, we're going over that bridge and we'll show you where Johnny Luxmore lived. The little boy that fell in the creek in 1894 and drowned. And some of the guys from the mule barn came out here and tried to get him, but uh, he went down 500 feet and drowned, five or six years old. Up on the side of the hill there, you can see a rock formation that's not uh, natural, it's man-made. That's part of the uh, railroad bed, one of the railroads that took coal out of uh, Edgerton. It went by, back that way towards the uh, Hunter Pavilion. But that's all that's left is that bunch of rocks up there. Okay, if you dig that little uh, business card out that I gave you with the picture and look at the breaker, you're looking at the remains of the breaker. You see those retaining walls up there, man-made? That's part of it. And way up top, amongst the trees, can you see the concrete up there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest remains of that breaker. It was big. In that, on that picture in that card. Mm -hmm. But all that's left now is that, that's the biggest piece of the foundation. And it was stepped up in layers and uh, it worked its way all the way down here. All these foundation walls are part of it. We did find where a 13 year old boy was working in there, he fell, broke his neck, mm -hmm. fell 18 feet. So there was debts in the breaker from some of the boys working there. This uh, remnant of a water pipe in the road here was one of several that took water out of that creek to my right and send it up to the breaker here on my left. They drew the water right out of the creek there, and uh, I think there's another one up a little further. It might be covered over now, but that's uh, well over 100 years old, and it took the water from that creek. Right behind where everyone's standing here was the foundation of the house where the Luxmore family lived. And back in 1894, little Johnny Luxmore was playing out in the yard with his sister, throwing stones in the creek, and he fell in, and the mother ran there and couldn't get him, and the mule barn was on right the opposite side of the creek there, and some of the men went out, and they ran down one side of the creek, and uh, the wife, the mother ran down the other side here, and he went down about 500 feet, and they found him dead, he drowned. No pictures of him. We did meet his nephew, Pepper and I, and uh, he's so oh, maybe 10 years older than me, and he said, yeah, that's my father's older brother. They said he had red hair, but nobody ever had any, any pictures of him. This uh, woods right here it used to be a field, and this is where they grew all their crops. Whatever they grew, corn or rye or whatever, it was all grown down here. And uh, Pepper went through there. He's never found any remnants of anything they grew, but he said it was all growing up with, with all their food they grew. They had the animals down by the Hunter Pavilion, and they had the crops up on this end. That picture you have on the card was taken from up on that mountain. And we did go up there and take a picture modern day from the same vantage point. It looks, it's pretty neat. All woods now.
We're looking at the school foundation right here. This was covered up with silt and sand until the 1990s when Pepper uh, dug it out by hand. But this was the schoolhouse, if you look at that picture. The front door was here, the picture's taken, you can see the back. Two outhouses were in the back there, and there is remnants of those too. But this was the schoolhouse, and uh, Professor Morin was the last one to teach here. He lived down on Laurel Street, and he walked past Austin's house, all the way up number five hill, through the woods till he got here, and he'd light the fire, and he'd teach, put the fire out, and walk home. He used to walk past a house, a uh, girl, her name was Winifred Caffrey. Got to know her, ended up marrying her. They had one daughter, Grace Marin, and uh, that's how he met his wife, walking to school up here. But he was the last teacher. They had quite a few of them, but he was the last that taught up here. But that's all that's left of that uh, foundation of the school. Right here is all that's left of the foundation of the company store. I'm not sure how many of you have our book, uh, but there's pictures of it, two different pictures of kids standing in front. They had a band, some kind of a band with the kids in it, and they stood right here in front of the company store. And all that's left is that foundation. We did do metal detecting there, Pepper and I. We hit a metal box, and he starts digging frantically. And I said, watch, you don't get cut, you know, on a tetanus. And uh, it was just a top, there was nothing on it. Then the clouds opened up, and we had to put the detectors in the car. So we got to come back. Yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. That's nice and shallow. Yeah, yeah. That's a good place. So, I took the dog in there one time just to pull off. Yeah. Right? Um. Ooh, that's a nice shot. This is where the walkers are going to come out once they finish the Edgerton tour, but they, they have not arrived yet. Well, the first of the uh, hikers to straggle out of the woods. There's still a lot more up there, though. They have to come out. <laughs> I never thought we were all by ourselves. 